Motorsports being uh, uh, contested, you can just about bet that Hooters is going to be in it, around it, or, or around it somehow or another, and uh, certainly we've seen a lot of that this year. Bob, again, thanks very much for a great year. Uh, enjoyed uh, uh, all of the racing that I saw in the Hooters Cup Series, and uh, congratulations on a great event here in uh, Pensacola. Thank you, Pat. Maybe next year we'll have an even better year. Yep, I have no doubt. I have no doubt. Let's go down to, uh, back downstairs to Doug Rice one more time. All right, thanks a lot, Pat. We've caught up the fourth place finisher, Ron Barfield Thank you, Jr., it. with five laps to go. Ron was running first, then it fell back. It looked like he'd be the runner up. And then at the close of the race, things kind of fell apart. Tell us exactly what happened there near the end, Ron. Well, you know, this Michael Motorsports Subway for Thunderbird run good. I mean, all day long. And, uh, you know, it's been running good since we got here. You know, my hat's off to the crew that did an excellent job with me. Hats off to Jeff Purvis. He run a super race. I, I didn't have nothing for him there at the end. We had, um, we had tires. We got a lap down earlier and had to use our tires up to get a lap back, and I didn't have any left in the pit, so uh, I had to go with what I had. And you know, I thought we run second there, even with the thing, because I thought that uh, the 98 and the 14 were a lap down. But you know, we'll take it. You know, my first snowball derby. You know, I'm looking forward to coming back here next year, and um, you know, it, we'll get them next time. That's pretty good. Your first snowball derby ever, and you come home in fourth place. That's not bad for a long day's worth of work down here. No, it ain't. You know. You know, I got a good team, and they, they knew a good setup up this racetrack, and, um, you know, it worked real good, and, you know, I'll sit here and, you know, look, we'll build new cars over the winter and uh, try to put some deals together for next year, and we'll see what we're going to do next year. Jeff Purvis, awfully strong all day long, even though you had that advantage on him there. Once he was able to get to the inside of it, he pulled away with really uh, not too much trouble, didn't he? Oh, yeah, my only chance was right there at the last was to hope that somebody would get in the back of him, turn him sideways or something like that, you know, but... You know, I thought, I said, well, you know, that's going to be hard to do since we only got two cars here on the lead lap. And, uh, you know, I never thought a lap car would turn somebody sideways on the last lap. But, you know, anything can happen in racing. And it happened today to Ron Barfield, Jr., like we said, with five laps to go. He was holding on to the lead, then it looked like second place, and then all of a sudden it all evaporated to a fourth-place finish today for Ron Barfield, Jr. But Mark Allen has caught up with the old-timer who brought it home in third today. Mark? Well, Jody, you go 0 for 1995, but you come up with a strong finish at the end of it. Give us a sense of how today's race went for you. Well, we were up and down. We were really good. Well, really, we were pretty good all day. We kept, got in a couple of incidents out there, and uh, but the last set of tires were just junk. Other than that, I wasn't real good all day, and uh, when I needed them, it just something was wrong with them. So I think we faded there at the end, and uh, you know, but uh, where we started is not a bad day, you know. You know, Jody, we were worried on TV before the race that we had a four-and-a-half-hour race that we had to compress into three hours of TV time, yet we finished much earlier than we expected. Why do you think that is? Well, I think that's a tribute to the field. We had a, uh, more good cars than normal here. A lot of times you got uh, 25, 30 really good cars, and the rest of them aren't that good, and, and a, a lot of cautions out. But today we had a lot of good cars. And I think it, uh, that's really why we didn't see as many cautions. And they hurried up the caution, they didn't drag it out. So they did a good job all the way around. I'll tell you, here's a guy who's really looking forward, Pat, to next year's schedule with that half million dollar bonus money and 15,000 to win. All the races are going to be 200 laps or more. Do you feel that plays more into your driving style? Well, it really does for, uh, uh, from the sense that uh, normally I qualify really bad. I don't know why, but that's just the way it is. And, a hundred lapper, you don't have the count caution in the nose, and, and you don't have time to get up front, even if you start in back. And 200 laps, you can kind of lay back, take it easy, and not take many chances. And then if you got a good car, you can get there in 200 laps. And uh, that's what I'm going to like about the whole deal. Jody Ridley, third today here in the Snowball Derby. What a great afternoon, I tell you, Eddie. Jody uh, did exactly kind of what we thought he would do, and that was uh, be around at the end. And, I mean, if there's any... Uh, uh, underlying uh, secret to this event besides just surviving those first 200 laps it's got to be doing just that just surviving being there to race this thing at the end yeah you know the, the old saying you must first finish before you can finish first and uh, nobody sums that up better than than Jody does uh, he was kind of my pick as we were going along near the end of the race and uh, he held in there. It, it was obvious something had dropped off a little bit. It was the tires, but man, what a race. Yeah, I think it's interesting, too. He, he made a very good point, and that is, you know, normally this race probably goes a lot longer than three hours. In fact, we were real concerned about being able to finish on time. We got through with plenty of time to spare, and it's because, I believe, of the amount of, amount of uh, you know, uh, of talent that was in this field. The amount of talent w w was as strong as I've ever seen. Uh, the track did a fantastic job of getting the, the cautions cleaned up, getting right back to racing, which is why everybody's here to see racing. And uh, 
the racers like to see that, you know, when you sit in that car, you don't want to ride around there too long. And, um, you know, my hat's off to, to the way the whole thing came off today. There is some finality, if you will, to the Snowball Derby. It's as if, if now racing is truly over for the year. And uh, that's, a, that's it's a neat thing. Enjoyed working with you this afternoon. It was a, it was a lot of fun. And I uh, appreciate the opportunity. I'd rather been racing. That's where I know my you would at. have, as well as with, uh, with Doug and Mark. Great job to uh, those guys. And... Uh, it's just been a super afternoon. Today's broadcast of the 28th Annual Snowball Derby was brought to you by Hooters, home of the nearly world famous Wings. And by Jackaroo Barbecue Sauce. It's not just for barbecue anymore. And by Naturally Fresh, nature's finest blended naturally. And by Red Dog Beer, be your own kind of dog. And by Goodyear, number one in racing, number one in tires. It has been a beautiful afternoon. We're so glad you've joined us as the sun starts to set here in Pensacola, Florida. We have had ourselves a great day. For Eddie Sharp, for Mark Allen, for Doug Rice, and for all the hardworking crew saying so long for 1995. Let's go racing again in 96. So long, everybody.